What's up? Happy New Year, everyone. It's I, Nate Jackson, the Criterion Collection reviewer guy person who's kind of black and white at the same time. Welcoming you to... We're in, we're in the 20s now, finally. Sorry I didn't get to this one. I was supposed to do this one back in yeah, November. I mean, not November. Uh, Monday or Tuesday. How did I get from November to Monday to Tuesday? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to keep this quick because we got a lot to talk about about this one. Yeah, things happened anyway, and so I guess we start the new year with a we start the new year with a doozy, ladies and gentlemen. Sid and Nancy, nineteen eighty six. What's this guy's name? Alex Cox. We'll talk about Alex Cox in a little while. But um, basically, for those of you who don't know who Sid and Nancy is, I'm talking about Sid Vicious from the infamous punk rock group Sex Pistols and his American girlfriend Nancy Spurgeon I think it's Spurgeon um, met, fell in love, did drugs and died essentially um, not necessarily in that order basically the movie is about you know, basically it focuses on their relationship um, there's a little bit of, you know, there's about the first half of the movie focuses on the Sex Pistols, or his time with the Sex Pistols. And the rest of it focuses on his ill-fated solo career, as well as the end. The end of um, Nancy. The the stabbing and all that. Um, and, you know, that's funny enough. I mean, it's like, basically, you know, they... For those of you who don't know, I'll try to summarize the plot. I actually took some notes this time, and um, I'm slot. I'm if you see me looking over here, I'm referring to them. And the first thing I wrote was plot, because there isn't really. I mean, it's hard to write plot when on this true story. You know, this is all you know, based on facts. Um, there's a lot about you know. Um, there's a lot of the movies. Just you know, it's about. It starts off with. It starts off with. Um, Sid Vicious in his in the hotel room where where she's dead on the floor of the bathroom and the they take they take take him down to the police police station and he starts crying and, and they ask her you know who's you know like how'd you meet her and then the movie finally picks up from when they start met and how he met Nancy through some woman named Linda and all that, and then they show scenes of the Sex Pistols performing, and all that, and, and uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, so then from there on, you know, Sex Pistols break up, they move to America, they, they you know, try, she, Nancy becomes her, his manager and tries to get him his solo career, you know, with a band and all that. And all the time, they're shooting up heroin, because... She pretty much gets him hooked on heroin. That's the general consensus, you know. He's seen, apparently he's seen. I mean, I should have watched, it, and I'll get to well, I'll get to my research in a little while. But yeah, but basically, yeah. So the story goes is that they they eventually just got so strung out on heroin that they couldn't do anything really, um, and they pretty much spent I guess the rest of their time in a hotel room until. One, you know, so was, they had a fight, and I guess Nancy fell on a knife that Sid was holding, and she, you know, after, you know, and they, they went to bed together, and, but in the morning, I guess she woke up and went to the bathroom and bled to death and died on the floor. That's what I'm assuming, assuming how it works, how it worked out. Um, and the movie pretty much ends with, Sid being freed out on bail, and the end, he's, it's weird, he's, it's this weird shot of these, he's eating this pizza in this, like, really weird, like, little shack in, near a dumb, like, a junkyard, and basically this, then these three black kids come up and, um, are dancing to Casey and the Sunshine Bands get down tonight, and well, he's walking, and I thought, and first thing I thought was, well, that's, that's so crazy, that, that makes perfect sense, you know, punk and disco were like, were like, 
putting two positive, you know, positive poles of a magnet together. It's like they totally couldn't, you can't get them together, you know, even though artists like The Clash tried, you know, but whatever. We're not talking about The Clash. We're talking about the Sex Pistols, or I guess just Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols. But anyway, he starts dancing with these kids until this like taxi pulls up and Nancy's in the back seat and he gets in the car and they start kissing and they drive off. And I'm assuming Nancy is supposed to be the that is supposed to be his like return to drugs, you know. Nancy was his gateway to drugs. So the taxi's like his he drives away because he of course he died about I think he died like six months after she did I think in his death there was like January 9th, 1979, I think. I'm not, I'm not sure. I guess, I'm, uh, well, I'll, I'll say it in a second. But yeah, that's basically, okay, so, okay, so that's the basic plot. Now let me get to everything I have to say, because I got a lot to say about this one. First of all, I am not a huge Sex Pistols fan. I, I've listened to, I'm familiar of, with pretty much just God Save the Queen and Anarchy in the UK. And Sid Vicious's cover of My Way. Those are the only three Sex Pistol related items. And I know a little bit of John Lyons' work in Public Image Limited, but very little. Like I said, it's all very limited. Um, because of their limited, disc, because of how little they recorded, I'm, I'm, you know, I've always been intri- up for hearing their stuff. Um, I think I did actually listen to Never Mind the Boxers and Sex Pistols a long time ago when I was like 15 or 16, so I don't quite remember. I might have been 14, actually. Um, and I just probably listened to it because I knew it was a really important album. Um, one of the most important albums ever recorded, you know, as far as punk music went. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I need to get back into it. And I probably should have listened to it before I hit this movie, but, hey, you know, it's, it, we're really supposed to be talking about what we got in this movie. Um, and yeah, so it's not really about the Sex Pistols, but anyway. So yeah, so I don't know a lot about you know, this, you know, their story, the the real story or anything. So I tried to do my research while I was watching it. And I'll admit, I used stuff like Wikipedia and, you know, I read up some reviews and stuff like that. And so, you know, it's all pretty much internet-based, you know, but that's that's the way it goes, you know. Um, let's see, what else? But yeah, so that's that's my knowledge of the Sex Pistols and Sid Vicious and all that. It's very, very limited, so bear with me. If I make some mistakes... Now bear with me. Um, I think the the one thing that I really noticed was really bizarre was the music, the soundtrack. There are P- Sex Pistols songs in there, in there, um, but the soundtrack was just so plain. Like especially the scene where um, I think probably the lamest moment musically was the scene with the the fire where the fire is caught in their apartment and they're just so strung up that you don't even notice it and then the fire the firemen have to like lead them out and they don't even know what's going on um or they know but they're just you know so strung out that they don't do a thing about it and it's just this really disturbing funeral music that's just so freaking depressing and it's just like oh i just feel like a music a movie about the punk rock in set in the punk rock era should just have naturally just nothing but punk rock, you know, just have this really sad synthesizer music is just so, so anti-punk, but then maybe, maybe against, going punk against punk, maybe is punk, punk against punk equals punk. So there you go. The music was, yeah, the music was kind of lame. Even Joe Strummer, you got Joe Strummer of The Clash, you know, and a lot of people talk about, you know, the Joe, the, the clash not being too punk and i can see where they're going i mean they didn't really stay in a punk movement they did you know reggae and dub and funk and you know even a little swing and stuff like that it's all kinds of they did all kinds of stuff not but they their first couple albums were based on punk you know so they're usually grouped into a punk set scene so there you go um also, yes, drugs, obviously. I, I, I'm i not a, you know, I don't know anything about heroin and what it does to you because I don't do heroin. And I don't know any, well, I, yeah, well, let's say, let's just say I don't, I no longer know anyone who does heroin. Um, so yeah, I feel like, 
it's focus it focused a little bit much on the drugs, which obviously were a big part of their relationship. But you know, you know, it makes for. I think it seems it it tends to make for easy acting, and I know that that's kind of rude to say, but still, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta be straight with you. It makes for easy acting. Um, Nancy. I'm assuming that for most people, Nancy is to the Sex Pistols what. Yoko was to the Beatles. I'm assuming that's how people feel about her. Um, she, she was, I mean, I couldn't get over this person. I mean, there were a couple things. First of all, she's annoying as hell, and a lot of people say, you know, she's annoying. And, um, John Lydon, for one, hated her. Um, and when the, when the lead singer of your group hates your girlfriend, it's kind of like, you gotta, you gotta kinda, kinda gotta go with the, the group, you know? I mean, cause it affected them the most. Uh, that's, I mean, I think there's, I mean, Chloe Webb, obviously, I was, you know, her performance was really over the top, but then again, you watch the interviews, and we'll get to the interviews in a bit, you know, and Nancy is almost, you know, she hits it spot on, just a little more overacted, because, you know, it's a movie, and, how people act overact in movies. Yeah, that's basically yeah. And also the fact that I just couldn't see before I knew, you know, because I was looking up and apparently, you know, uh Nancy was 20 when she died. And I think she was tw yeah, 20 about 20 when she died, which means she was about 19 when a lot of this, you know, a lot of this shit happened. Um, and so that makes it, you know, makes, and so I just, I couldn't see Chloe Webb as a 20 year old, 19, 20 year old. Um, I, I don't know how old she was. I didn't, I didn't look it up. Um, cause it just didn't seem very in, too, too important, but yeah, so I just, it, it seemed a little unbelievable. And even when I saw the interviews, I was just like, God, she's Yeah, and then of course, I think the big thing that I saw on, you know, if you look on the Wikipedia page, half the article is a complaint from John Lydon, who disowned the movie, who hated it, and felt like it was, wasn't true, and they didn't even, I guess Alex Cox didn't even bother to talk to him, you know, he would have told, helped tell the real story, and, but no, they just, they figured out, you know, all these, you know, they, he tried, I guess Cox tried to figure it out on his own. And, you know, I just, I, you know, and when somebody from the real, I mean, if Sid Vicious were still alive and today and it was just about Nancy's suicide and the movie ends with, you know, Sid dancing with the disco kids and then he comes back and watches the movie and says, oh, this is, this isn't how it goes. Then, you know, of course, you've got to go with the guy who lived through it. And even if he was like messed up on drugs. He still has some, he had to have some kind of recollection of what was going on, because he was there. You weren't there, Alex Cox. In fact, nobody was there. In fact, that whole, you know, the only two people that were there were the bass player and the drug addict. That's all, you know. So, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta go with John Lyon. I, I, like I said, I don't know much about Sex Pistols, but I'm not putting a lot of validity into this. Maybe someday I'll see, you know, the great rock and roll swindle. I mean, which is, you know, another kind of like, gotta walk on eggshells with that movie, you know, because of Malcolm McLaren's involvement. Uh, whom, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Malcolm McLaren's like solo work, like Duck Rock and all that. So that's what kind of like, that's also pulling me into checking out the Sex Pistols because I like Buffalo Gals and Madam Butterfly. And when I saw the character, and on the movie, I was like, oh, that's Malcolm, because he has that crazy brown, dark hair. You know, so I was like, oh, that is Malcolm. And uh, you'd think that there'd be a little more influence, because he apparently shaped, he created the Sex Pistols, you know. And he loved Sid for being all wild on stage and all that. So, yeah, uh, that's, um, and, the, you know, what the other thing is, I think one of the disappointments of the movie was it's, 
you know, attempt to add a little humor. I mean, there were, there were bits where it was kind of funny, like, you know, John Lydon's character was kind of funny at times, um, intentionally and unintentionally. I think probably the weakest scene, though, was the one scene that sticks out in my mind, which was just kind of like, what, you know, had me saying, like, what the hell is this? Was the scene where, um, Sid and Nancy are walking by those, bully they're walking they're walking by these kids who are bullying this one kid for like three bucks and they're and he's like hey hey stop it now and he's like oh he owes us three dollars and he and he's like oh well just i don't care just stop stop bullying him it's like oh who are you and he's like, sid vicious and then it cuts to the kids and they all run away but the film is sped up and they run in like that benny hill fast the uh, fast the uh, film thing and that was just kind of like, that was corny and cheesy, and that didn't need to be in there. It totally just kind of like was a separate world. It was a separate world from the rest of the film, so, yeah. And then the ending. And then the ending was, I just didn't get that ending. And like I said, I already explained it. But then the last thing you see is a like kind of a postscript. It says, Sid Vicious died of a heroin overdose, I think January 12th, 1979, whatever. Then on the bottom it says in red letters, Nancy and Sid, R.I.P. Now, the movie's called Sid and Nancy. Why did you put it Nancy and Sid? I'm assuming they did it because Nancy died first. But still, if you're going to call the movie Sid and Nancy, why put the epithet Nancy and Sid? Why change it up at the very last second? I don't get it. And on that note, I rate this movie a C. Because. Well, again, while I don't know a lot about punk rock or the Sex Pistols or anything, I know that this movie was was trying to be a little too Hollywood. Um, I think the only scene that I give Alex Cox for directing is the scene where um, Sid falls through the window of the hotel in slow motion. And then you hear all their voices talking over the scene, and he's, and he's trying to get up. That was a nice scene. That was a really cool scene. I thought it was kind of a nice little direction. Um, and it left me wondering, like, whoa, you know, that was kind of trippy. Because he's just, like, talking to somebody, and then he just falls through the window. And you think that the movie's going to go somewhere else with that. But, no, he's just in bed the next scene. It's like, and then they break up. And, like, whoa. So, Yeah. It just, I, I know there's got to be a better, you know, I'd much rather watch a documentary. They should have put a documentary in the movie. It just, you know, the first, the last half, the last hour of the movie, I was just sitting like, because I was kind of more interested in seeing about the Sex Pistols, maybe, you know, I'm mean, a little biased toward the band, you know, rather than just Sid Vicious, you know, just this relationship with, his relationship with this girl who, you know, I guess effectively ruined his life. So, yeah, see, I, I feel like the story could have probably been done a little more better justice. Now, this movie is out of print. The Criterion Edition is out of print. I don't have the Criterion Edition. Um, and funny enough, the Criterion Edition actually has quite a bit of supplements. Um, so I tried to look up as much as I could online, and I got the gist of it. Um, there's a half-hour documentary called um, England's Glory, which features Alex Cox most of the time. It's like the making a half-hour documentary about the making of it. It's pretty boring. It doesn't really do a lot. It doesn't really show you a lot of the movie. Um, it's basically just him dicking around and all that. And it's, yeah, it's not that great. Um, and I got a really bad vibe from Alex Cox watching him. I feel like he he's just trying to fit in. I mean, he looked like a punk rocker, but at the same time, he talked, he, he, he only, like, I feel like he only adapted this mentality when, when he was, like, with the actors, like, to help them, to help them stay in character, you know, whereas otherwise he would just be this normal guy, you know, in a clean suit, combed hair and all that, you know, but for the, for the movie, he looks just, he fits in, oh my god, look at me guys, I'm fitting in. I can make a punk rock movie because I fit in. <laughs> you know, so I, I he rubbed me the wrong way, and I don't think he's really that legit. So, 
you know, I could be wrong, but honestly, I just don't see it. Um, God, we're already at 20 minutes now. Yeah, let's, let's make this, let's finish this up. Um, uh, the other, other, other supplements they have were, um, I guess a 15 minute interview from a movie called DOA, which is about the punk rock movement, um, with the real Sid Nancy. Uh, apparently it goes on for 15 minutes. Um, I could find, I found about seven minutes of it online on YouTube. Um, and God, is it heartbreaking to see them really, you know, and this, they, I mean, to see real people struggle out on drugs. It's just, I mean, that's, that's what I want to see. I want to see that. And it's heartbreaking, but I'd much rather see that than people acting, you know. Um, but she kind of, but you do what you do, you know, and of course they made a film, you know. You can't put put all that into a real feature length film, even though people have tried and all that. But but yeah, I mean, I saw about seven minutes. I don't know if I saw the whole thing. I read on a review that it ran for about fifteen minutes. The segment on the Criterion disc runs for about fifteen minutes, but I saw about seven minutes. I thought that's enough. Um, the other thing they add was the two and a half minute, I think two minute interview with the Sex Pistols before the infamous. Um, interview they did in, I think in 1977 with, on the Bill Grundy show or with Bill Grundy um, where they cursed all over the place and they effectively got Bill Grundy fired um, because he was on daytime talk he was a daytime talk show and they had the sex pistols on and they were just cursing or at least Steve Jones was at least Steve and Johnny were um, and yeah so I mean there's that and then I think they added some oh they added a, a telephone interview which I think which I couldn't um, nail which one it was, but I did find one that was um, with some photographer that I guess um, Sid tried to break her nail, and I guess he called. She called him um, sometime after they broke up in San Francisco, and he was in Jamaica. He was in Jamaica Hospital or in JFK or New York or something. And um, yeah, so they he she called and they talked for about fifteen minutes, I think, and. Uh, it was kind of hard to tell what they were saying, but I got the gist of it. I mean, in the beginning, he he starts to kind of pick up. In the beginning, he's really like, he sounds like he just woke up, but then he kind of like gets himself up, and he, you know, it's just it's even even sadder. It's just sad, you know, because he talks about why don't he get himself clean, and he's like he, he just keeps he's so despairing that he can't get himself clean. Uh, yeah, so, and that's about it. And of course, there's commentary, but I don't do commentary. I'm not doing. You know, commentary or anything like that. So, basically, I'm not going to do a supplements thing because I think I've basically got it out. Um, and that's all I got. Um, basically, I, you know, I had a lot to say about this movie and I went into it thinking this one's going to be long. And sure enough, th I think this is probably the longest review I've done. And this probably, this, and I don't know, I might do longer, but we'll see. Anyway. So let's leave it at this. Let's end this so that we don't go to 25 minutes. Um, thanks for watching, if you made it this far. Um, Sid and Nancy, uh, see, um, I think you probably learn a lot more just from looking up interviews on YouTube or watching maybe. I know there are other Sex Pistol, do just watching Sex Pistol documentaries. I mean, I'm sure you'll get the gist of Sid and Nancy from what if they mention her in those interviews, documentaries. I will definitely try and be, you know, try to take a little active look at Sex Pistols now, because, you know, I don't listen to a lot of punk, and I'd like to try them out. So yeah, that's it. Sit next. See. Watch it if you must. Um, next one. 21, Dead Ringers. Um, I got it. It's in the bag. We'll watch it tomorrow. Um, and, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I didn't bother to look and see if there were um, supplements, but, yeah. Uh, summertime, we'll do, summertime is number 22, we'll do that, um, Sunday, Monday we'll do Robo Robocop, Monday or Tuesday we'll do Robocop, um, and then after that is, I think, high and low, and then I just put a hold on that, so that'll be sometime Thursday or Friday, hopefully, hopefully it'll come before then. And that's it, so, thanks for watching again, and, uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Dead Ringers, hopefully a better movie than Sydney Nancy, and hopefully it will a little more cooler. So it looks like it's a horror film, so maybe lights off. Maybe another lights off. Maybe another creepy movie. We'll see. And on that note, goodbye.